I completed her Bachelor of Health Science at the University of Western Sydney, uh, where she got the gold medal, uh, and then went on to do her honours uh, also at Western Sydney, and then came here. Uh, her PhD data, don't even think about it, Joseph. <laughs> her PhD data um, was collected as part of our um, larger ARC project called AMP. Um, but I have the distinct pleasure of telling you that Rhiannon's topic was completely of her own making. She came to me with the idea, and I think she came up with quite a, an interesting and a novel topic. Um, uh -huh. So on the on the phone with us, we have uh, Associate Professor Thomas Asselbert, who was one of Rhiannon's um, co-supervisors when we were at Western Sydney, and also the well, doctor. What are you doing? Get out. Sorry. <laughs> Dr. Rebecca Olson, who's now at the University of Queensland. Yes. Thank uh, so you. the lesson in this is that everybody leaves Western Sydney, it's not just us. Uh, so they, they've left as well, um, but they've continued to provide uh, the animal input over the last several years. And we also have um, Dr. Jeff Parker, who's on the board as a, as a supervisor since we, we moved to, uh, to IPB. Um, so, Ray, over to you. Okay, cool. Thanks, Chris. Okay, so my thesis is on the relationship between physical activity and mental health. So really briefly, um, we know that mental health is important. Mental health disorders are the largest cause of disability and the largest contributor to burden of disease among children, adolescents and young adults. There's evidence of a 14 year gap in life expectancy between the general population and those with a mental health disorder. Uh, positive mental health and mental well-being, however, are not only a positive protective factor against the onset of mental health disorders, but they're also associated with self-esteem, positive relationships, positive emotions, and the ability to work productively. So what do we already know in terms of the relationship between physical activity and well-being? Um, there's abundant evidence showing that physical activity is positively associated with happiness, self-esteem, mental health, life satisfaction, as well as inversely associated with depression and anxiety, psychological distress, stress and negative affect. The mental health benefits of physical activity are so widely accepted that the physical activity guidelines recommending how much physical activity people should do actually recognise that two of the benefits of achieving those guidelines are managing mental health problems and maintaining mental well-being. However, when we think about what physical activity actually is, it's a really broad concept that includes a large variety of different behaviours. So to explain that, I'm just going to play this quick video instead. activity includes so many different behaviours that are so different and there's likely to be um, a bunch of different contextual variables that are influencing whether physical activity is actually beneficial to mental health or not. And so one particular contextual variable I'm looking at in my thesis which you could see in that video was the life domain in which physical activity is undertaken during. So physical activity could be undertaken during leisure time, it could be part of your daily work, it could be part of school for adolescents, so school sport and physical education. Physical activity could also be household physical activity, as well as a means of transportation. So again, from these pictures, you can see that really different physical activity behaviours can be um, conducted in these different life domains. And when I was looking into this at the start of my thesis, the evidence so far seemed to suggest that leisure time physical activity was more beneficial for mental health than these other domains. And while this is a really good thing to know that leisure time physical activity appears to be beneficial, 
Um, leisure time physical activity only accounts for a small portion of people's weekly physical activity. And so while we know that leisure time physical activity is good, we need to know a lot more about what's going on in these other domains as to whether these other physical activity behaviours that people are participating in are actually beneficial to mental health or not. And so the broad um, objective of my thesis was to look at the relationship between domain-specific physical activity and mental health and to look at whether motivation plays a role um, in those relationships. So the first study of my thesis was a systematic review and meta-analysis. So this study obviously involved systematically collecting a number of studies and the studies included in um, the review had to measure physical activity within a specific physical activity domain. So they couldn't just measure physical activity during the whole week. One purpose of this study was to synthesize the evidence so that we could determine the effect size within each domain to see if leisure time was the most beneficial domain, um, perhaps if it was the only beneficial domain, and to see whether the other life domains compared in relation to leisure time. And the second purpose was using moderated analyses to then explore more about what was going on, get more of an understanding of the relationship within each domain. So for example, looking at how age influences the work-related physical activity domain. So 13,000 titles and abstracts were screened, 373 full texts were screened, and 97 studies met the inclusion criteria were included in the meta-analysis. And as you can see from this bottom one, down the bottom if you can read a lot, um, 92 of the 97 studies included measured leisure time physical activity. So you can see already that there is um, a lot more evidence for leisure time and that's really dominated our evidence based on physical activity so far and we don't know as much about the other, other domains. So the results for this study were really interesting. Um, as you can see here, leisure time physical activity and transport physical activity were the only two domains that were significantly associated with um, mental health. And while they're actually the same correlation effect size there, the transport physical activity domain had a lot less studies included. Um, it also has a wider confidence interval, also less significant. So it appears like leisure time might be a little bit more consistent than transport physical activity in terms of its benefits. But it was good to find that transport physical activity was positively associated with mental health as well as leisure time. Looking at mental ill health, however, these top two domains at the top really highlight how important life domain is and that um, physical activity isn't inevitably going to have benefits to mental health no matter what. Um, Work-related physical activity was positively associated with mental ill health, almost to the same degree as leisure time was inversely associated with mental health. Sorry, mental ill health. And although um, school sport appears to be in the right direction, it does look like it has this inverse relationship with mental ill health, um, only two studies were included in this domain. So the evidence for school sport and physical education is still really inconclusive. Um, there might be something there, but there's not enough to determine whether it is or not from this review. And so the rest of my thesis then focuses a little bit more on why is there a difference. If we think that physical activity is good for mental health and years of research have shown that it is, why is it not consistently associated with mental health? Why are these differences occurring? And so one reason that has been discussed in the literature, just through a couple of people's discussions trying to explain their results, is that the reasons why people do physical activity may explain some of this variation. And this was harder in one study in particular, and this study found that um, active travel to work was associated with increased stress among blue collar workers but not among white collar workers. And their explanation for this was that blue, um, white collar workers, sorry, are likely to be more affluent, they're likely to have a higher income, they might be a lot more likely to own a car, and therefore their active travel to work is more likely to be a choice due to enjoying walking or perceived benefits that they might get from actively traveling. Whereas the blue collar workers are likely to have a lower income, less likely to own a car, therefore them riding to work is likely to be more due to financial factors rather than their own choice. And so this hadn't been tested, this was just someone's discussion suggesting these ideas, but it was a really interesting idea and it seemed to fit with self-determination theory very well. So this is what my next study focused on. So study two was a qualitative investigation to explore the role that motivation might play in the relationship between physical activity and mental health. So this study recruited 114 adolescents and it was administered via a self-assisted interview rather than a face-to-face -face interview. 
This was done to increase privacy so that the students' answers were entirely um, anonymous. And the reason for this was to hopefully get more in-depth data, more honest responses, and less social desirability distortion when we're asking them things about um, their emotions and their feelings to hope that they would respond more honestly over the iPad rather than face-to-face -face interviews. Um, so these questions for this study were set out in that the students were asked to think of a physical activity experience that made them feel good. A physical activity experience that was associated with feeling happy and lively. Um, the, we use the words from the Penis Positive Affect Scale to really facilitate the students thinking of a physical activity experience that was associated with positive affect. And then after they described this physical activity behaviour, um, a number of probing follow-up questions were used to ask the students where they did the physical activity, when the physical activity occurred during their daily life, who they were acting with, if they did the behaviour with anybody else, and why they participated in that particular physical activity that they associated with these positive moods and emotions. And then the same questions were asked in terms of a physical activity experience that they associated with negative moods and emotions. And so this diagram here just shows the reasons why physical activity was associated with positive affect as opposed to why physical activity was sometimes associated with negative affect. So the participants explained that physical activity was associated with these positive moods and emotions because the activity was fun and enjoyable. They enjoyed the activity they were doing, therefore they were having fun while they were doing it. It was also associated with positive affect. Um, if, because they felt better about themselves. They made achievements, they made progressions, they learned new skills, performed well in a game. These types of experiences made them feel better about themselves, more confident, and therefore they felt proud and felt lively and felt happy. Uh, physical activity was also associated with positive affect due to the distraction that it created. A number of students discussed how participating in physical activity, they weren't focusing on exams they had at school the next day, they were purely thinking about the activity that they were doing and nothing else. Physical activity was also associated with positive affect if the students recognised that they felt a sense of belonging associated with the people that they did that physical activity with. So it could have been their classmates at school during PE or their teammates in their sport that they did during leisure time. However, when physical activity was described in relation to negative influences of the people they did physical activity with, so things like peer comparisons and um, feeling judged and embarrassed when participating in physical activity in front of other people, then physical activity was linked with these negative um, moods and emotions. Uh, if there was no optimal challenge, so if people felt bored, um, sorry, if it was too easy, they felt bored, or if it was too difficult, then they didn't feel competent. Also, if they had no interest in the physical activity they were doing and they felt forced to participate, these physical activity behaviours were associated with negative affect. Um, as opposed to the physical activity that the students described as fun and enjoyable, which was associated with positive affect. So looking now at that follow-up question that asked the students about why they did the physical activity behaviours, in response to the physical activity that was associated with positive affect, uh, really autonomous reasons were listed by essentially all of the students as to why they did that physical activity behaviour. So these are just a couple of quotes that sum up the majority of the students' participants. I do it because it's fun and enjoyable to do. I do it tag because I wanted to play with my friends and have fun. So really autonomous reasons. Alternatively, when they were asked why they participated in that physical activity that they associated with negative moods and emotions, a lot more controlled reasons were listed. So these are a few quotes that sum up the main reasons. My parents said I needed to do a sport. School makes me, they force you to do it. And because my mates play. So these quotes um, in response to why they did physical activity in relation to the two different physical activity experiences they explained really highlighted the idea that motivation might be important. And these two quotes here, I will read them in a second, they're small, um, are both in relation to active travel. And I included these two here because it shows that even within the one domain, two different people with two very different reasons as to why they do active travel have two very different effective outcomes in response to that physical activity. So one student said, I have to walk from school because it's my only means of getting home. I don't have a choice. If my mum's busy and she can't pick me up, I have to walk. I feel miserable when I have to walk because it's a long way and my bag's heavy. However, another student said, sometimes I catch the bus to a shopping centre and meet up with my friends to walk to school. I have the choice to catch the bus straight to school, but I rather walk with my friends because I'm happy and relaxed when I walk to school because I'm with my friends and they keep my mind off other things that I could be stressed about. 
So I just included these two quotes to show the kind of things that I found in the qualitative study, that motivation does seem to be um, linked to different positive or negative effective experiences. And as a sort of just a side note, active travel seems to be a really important domain for adolescents. We know that leisure time physical activity declines dramatically during adolescence. Their organised sport participation drops, their participation in active free play drops, however active travel increases. So given that their active travel increases during adolescence and motivation seems to be important, um, it's a really important domain to look at for adolescents. And so my third study was to develop a measure of motivation towards active travel so that then I could use this in study four to, to determine whether motivation does moderate the relationship between physical activity and mental health. So the first phase of this study involved developing 28 initial items that measured autonomous motivation, controlled motivation and A motivation. I then recruited 25 SDT researchers to degree, rate the degree of match between each item and each construct. And I then determined um, the relevance of each item to each construct and worked out which items were related to the construct they were intended to measure and only that construct, so they weren't related to one of the other two. And this process narrowed the number of items from 28 down to 16. However, I did want to develop a rather brief measure as it was going to be used alongside <coughs> other measures um, with a young age sample. And so the 16 item scale was administered to an initial sample of 300 students and the 16 item model did occur well. However, following Marshall's approach to reducing the number of items, so looking at the factor loadings, the high modification indices that suggest cross loadings, and also ensuring that the items that were retained in each construct covered all of the theoretical components of that construct. This nine item model fit in the initial sample really well. So this nine item version was then administered to a cross validation sample of 1200 students and it fit just as well in the cross validation sample and was also invariant across males and females. So this nine item scale was then used in study four. <coughs> so my fourth study the purpose of this study was to look at the relationship between leisure time physical activity and positive and negative affect. So leisure time physical activity is a domain that, from following on from my first study, the review appears to be the most beneficial for mental health. And also looking at the relationship between active travel, a domain which appears to be really important for adolescents, but also a domain that we know a lot less about, and the relationship of active travel to positive and negative affect. And then to look at whether motivation towards physical activity moderated these relationships. So this study recruited 1,600 adolescents from Western Sydney government funded high schools. I used a self-report and objective measure of physical activity, two measures of motivation, so one measure towards active travel and one measure towards leisure time, and the PANAS scale as a measure of positive and negative affect. So the results for this study showed that leisure Leisure time physical activity was positively associated with positive affect, just as I found in the meta-analysis, and inversely associated with negative affect, also like I found in the meta-analysis. Active travel, however, was not significantly associated with either positive or negative affect. So this shows again, like I found in that first study, that the relationship is not consistent across these different physical activity domains, that physical activity is not inevitably going to have these positive benefits to mental health. Is this the objective measure as well as the self-report? This one is just the self-report measure to sort of keep it a bit simpler. Um, okay. There were slight differences between the objective and the self-report, but this one's the self-report. Um, so then I added the motivation variables and calculated the interaction between physical activity and motivation so that I could look at the moderating role of motivation. So just looking at the interactions now, what I found was that the interaction between leisure time physical activity and motivation was not significantly associated with positive, effect, positive affect or negative affect. So the relationship between leisure time physical activity and effective well-being was not moderated by motivation. However, looking at the active travel domain, when I calculated the interaction from active travel and autonomous motivation, the interaction had a positive significant relationship with positive affect. So the higher autonomous motivation was, the stronger positive relationship between active travel and positive affect. So students that were one standard deviation above the mean on autonomous motivation, the relationship was 0.05. However, for students one standard deviation below the mean 
the relationship was minus 0.11. When I did the same for controlled motivation, the interaction had a positive significant relationship with negative affect. So the higher control motivation was, the stronger positive relationship between active trouble and negative affect. So for students, one standard deviation above the mean on controlled motivation, the relationship between active travel and negative affect was 0.12. However, for students, one standard deviation below the mean on controlled motivation, the relationship between active travel and negative affect was minus 0.1. So just to sum up the results over the four studies, study one showed that the relationship between physical activity and mental health was domain specific. It wasn't necessarily this consistent across these different domains. Study two showed that motivation appeared to be an important factor that influenced the effective outcomes of physical activity. Study three developed the measure of motivation. So then study four could confirm that both life domain and motivation were important to this physical activity and mental health relationship. So leisure time physical activity was more beneficial than active travel. However, autonomously motivated active travel had a stronger positive relationship with effective well-being compared to active travel, which was undertaken due to controlled motivation. So just a couple of future directions. Um, I think a broader conceptualization of mental well-being is something that is important. So many studies at the moment consistently measure depression in relation to physical activity. And while I think it's important to understand the impacts of physical activity on depression, there's so many other components of mental health and mental ill health, and we need to know a lot more about all of the different variables. School sport and physical education are two domains that we definitely know, need to know a lot more about. Um, given that 50% of mental health disorders often emerge before the age of 14, I think it's really disappointing that these two domains, which are so important to adolescents, there's nowhere near as much research on in terms of the mental health benefits compared to physical activity domains that are more dominant in adult samples. Looking at the satisfaction, satisfaction of psychological needs in a lot more detail is something that would be really interesting and would also help to understand the role of motivation a lot. Um, Self-determination theory explains that autonomous motivation is expected to be linked to more positive psychological outcomes because people are more likely to autonomously participate in activities that satisfy their psychological needs. However, a review shows that competence has a lot closer relationship with sustained physical activity behaviour than relatedness or autonomy. And so perhaps students are consistently participating in leisure time physical activity that makes them feel competent. And maybe competence is more important to this role of motivation than relatedness or autonomy. And if we can, under, although I don't think it's a bad thing to promote the satisfaction of the whole three needs, if we can work out which component is essentially more important than the other two, that could help us work out to how to influence um, to get a more positive mental health benefit from physical activity. However, it's possible that the psychological need that's playing the most role varies between different domains as well. Competence may be most important to leisure time physical activity. However, in terms of active travel, that may present fewer opportunities to feel competent. And as the qualitative study showed, um, the student that discussed walking to school with her friends made her feel happy and made her enjoy walking to school. Perhaps relatedness is more important to the active travel domain. And therefore, um, if we aim to particularly promote that satisfaction of that need, that would be more beneficial for that domain. I also think, although physical activity guidelines do a good job of um, telling people how much physical activity they need to do and how intense it needs to be, um, I think we also need to encourage autonomous participation in physical activity that is enjoyable and interesting, as well as worrying about the intensity and the amount. Um, I think the most important thing from this research, though, is that we also need to maintain efforts towards increasing people's leisure time physical activity. Um, over the last little while, there's been a shift towards promoting these more incidental lifestyle-related physical activity behaviours such as active travel because it's been so difficult to increase people's deliberate physical activity behaviour. And just to finish out, I'm just going to really quickly play this video. It just has a couple of snippets from a few different physical activity campaigns um, that promote participation in physical activity. All you need to do is get out and on your feet and watching. Try walking with them whenever you can. Any physical activity, not just sports. Simple things like riding a bike, walking the dog, or walking to the
the shops to buy a newspaper. And all help for starters. Physical activity, which affects our mood, makes us happier, giving us a greater sense of well-being. Every day our steps all add up. And that's good news. Because the more you build up your steps, the better you'll feel. Every activity counts. Big or small. But they don't have to get it all in one go. They can break it up into bits. 10 minutes here, 15 minutes there. Physical activity, it all adds up. Okay, so I just included that to finish off with because um, while I think these approaches to promoting the idea of you just need to move, you just need to get up, you need to stop sitting, um, just walk, do sport, walk to school, walk to work, um, I think they're definitely a good approach to increasing people's physical activity behaviour. However, from this thesis, um, I can say that physical activity at any time of the day, in any way, is not necessarily going to be linked to these two mental health benefits. And so I think we do need to have that balance between promoting physical activity but also we don't want to drop the push to find ways to increase people's leisure time physical activity because it does appear that that leisure time physical activity domain has mental health benefits that aren't necessarily going to be there across other domains as well. And so there's a lot of different contextual factors that are coming in between this physical activity definition and the mental health benefits. And thanks. That subjective versus objective measure is yeah. really important because if the activity, if you hate the activity, it'll seem like it's longer. So there might be a bias in how, how much you report doing, yeah. which then, you know what I mean? Yeah. Be because just even independent of the self-determination kinds of needs, physical activity supposedly would act on the body in a way to reduce stress and relieve tension and things that humanly would be beneficial. Yeah. I mean, just measuring it objectively. Yeah, so one thing that I did think um, may have explained some of the difference between the two, um, the relationships between the self-report measures and positive and negative affect were stronger than the objective measure. And so thinking about the two different measures, the objective measure is measuring their moderate to vigorous physical activity participation. So it's measuring the time that they are physically active, whereas the self-report measure is probably, among adolescents, they're probably likely to report, for example, if they have soccer training for an hour, they're probably going to include that as 60 minutes, whereas there's no way that their entire 60 minutes was going to actually be MVPA and picked up by the accelerometers. So I think part of it could be that the time they spend in physical activity, in this setting with their friends, um, feeling competent, achieving things, um, may potentially be more important to <coughs> mental health than the physiological time that they spend moving, um, which suggests more of a psychological um, explanation rather than some of the physiological explanations that were seen sort of 20 years ago. Um, but that, yeah, that is something I hadn't thought of about if they don't like the activity as much, it might seem longer and they might drag out. Um, so yeah, I think it's actually finding out the way that they're answering the self-report questions would so shed a lot of light. So there's no link between act objective physical activity and well-being? Um, some of the relationships, some of them weren't significant. There was a couple there. So leisure time um, physical activity was inversely, as measured objectively, was inversely associated with negative affect, but it wasn't as strong as the self-report measures inverse relationship. Yeah. yeah. Let's see, I did a study a long time ago where we did a, a, an intervention on uh, aerobics training in different ways and one yeah. of them uh, had, both of them had more or less the same positive effect on physical fitness but one of the, a social comparison one had a negative effect on self-concept but uh, a sort of a, uh, a, a more SDT kind of uh, uh, one had a positive effect on self-concept and we didn't have a long-term control but one of the things that I was arguing there was that even though they both had a similar sort of uh, effect on physical fitness, uh, yeah. the physical fitness effect was likely to be short-term in the ones that uh, yeah. where their physical self-concept went down and so the whole notion 
of long-term engagement would be a really critical sort of aspect. And, yeah. and that would fit in real nicely with the yeah, SDG kind of uh, perspective. Yeah, definitely. It fits in really well with that whole balance between promoting leisure time for this activity um, as opposed to just getting people moving during their lifestyle as well. Um, yeah, because if the leisure time physical activity that they feel competent or have increased self-concept, they're going to continue that physical activity. So if they're going to stay continued in that physical activity, they're going to get potentially better physical benefits from maintaining their physical activity as well as possibly better mental health benefits than just simply doing these get up and moving type things. I yeah, guess, that's really interesting. I guess the other thing I was thinking of is that it might be an interesting one to look at a speech uh, kind of model where you yeah. move people from uh, yeah. a motivation to uh, uh, to autonomous uh, motivation, yeah. uh, and I, I know that some of the uh, some of the work done uh, in, in that area is arguing that you need to have uh, separate interventions depending upon the, uh, the stage where they are at uh, yeah. uh, in relation to that. I mean, more of that research has been done with things like giving up smoking and and stuff yeah. like that, but that stage sort of theory. It's not yeah. real well supported, but it's an intriguing one, and it could well uh, yeah. fit here as well. Yeah, no, that's definitely something I haven't thought of so far, but that would yeah, be really mm -hmm. interesting to look at the change and where it Thanks. Yeah. Did, did, the, uh, did the two, and you found two significant interactions. Yeah. Uh, uh, were they actually different interactions, or were they really the same? You know, if you put both of them in, were they both independently significant, or if you put both of them in, did one of them knock out the other, or both of them knock out each other? Um, that's something that I hadn't actually done when I did these results. I did have one model with autonomous motivation, um, and then the same model replacing autonomous motivation with control. So that would be actually something good to have a look at, in one model to see if it. Because that's really the, sort of a continuum. Yeah. And uh, so it may be that those interactions, those two different interactions, are really getting at the same thing. Yeah. That would be my guess. Yeah, no, it makes sense. negative or continue, did you say? No, no, no. The, the, the motivation. I don't agree. I've been arguing this point, but her data shows that they're not a continuum. They're actually positively correlated. Yeah, and I don't know where they get this model that, that uh, controlled and autonomous are separate, but in exercise, they both kind of yeah. tend to co-occur, so you feel guilty. No, 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 no. And I'm you talking, do. That's not the continuum. I'm talking about oh. the continuum where you go from a motivation to, uh, uh, to anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. He's yeah. got four or five. A motivation is definitely yeah. what I can do. Yeah. yeah, so he's got four or five steps uh, along there. It's not the three components. But the yeah. idea is that you go autonomous, a motivation, and a motivation and control are put to be positive correlated, but yeah. autonomous and control often co-occur, it's not, yeah. it's not a stage. We, we exercise because we feel guilty and because we want to. That, that's, I, I think, I don't know where they're getting this idea from, this is one of those things that everybody's always talking about, it's a stage, uh, I don't see the evidence ever, but yeah. maybe it's somewhere. Else. I think, I mean, you definitely can go from more a motivated to more control. Um, two more autonomous that is possible, but um, there is in the data there's a fairly high and fairly similar um, mean for autonomous and controlled, and there was a lot of reporting um, highly for autonomous and for controlled. Um, yeah, so. But a motivation, I agree, is more opposed more. to both of them. So yeah. you, the controlled motivation is you're trying to get the bastards off your back, and the autonomous motivation is you're doing what you love it. But a motivation means you neither got bastards on your back or nor do yeah. you love it. So I think there's a continuum there. But I don't think it's a continuum between control and, and autonomous. I don't, I don't agree that that's somehow they're, they're inversely related or something like that. That's not true. Well, in the theory, they are. That's wrong. Yeah. I think yeah. the theory's wrong. <laughs> 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 the data just doesn't bear that out at all. I, I, there was, um, I'm sure Richard would be arguing very first. Right there was a small positive correlation between autonomous motivation and control motivation. Oh. <laughs> Not <laughs> it wasn't as high as the correlation between control and um, animation, but it is there. Yeah. That's what we find in the <laughs> Cool. Any other? Yeah. Um, thank you for the great presentation. I was just wondering, did you have any covariates in your study? Like, like in the last one, I was imagining without really knowing it that yeah. if the kids were already heavier, like weight would have an impact. If they were heavier, yeah. they probably wouldn't move as much, but might be 
have a strong or negative effect? Yeah. Um, so the results sort of that I presented on um, at the moment are just controlled for um, age and sex, um, but I do have um, a number of other variables um, such as BMI and their weight status and, and ethnicity and things like that that I can add in to have a look at how that influences results. But at the moment, it's just controlled for age and sex. That's a really good point because you might see more stigmatized, people who are stigmatized by their weight being less inclined to do pleasure stuff and more social stuff being, I don't know, maybe harder for them to do. Yeah. It's more likely to avoid physical activity altogether. Yeah. It's more likely to be a negative. Would you be willing to do incidental more? Maybe because it doesn't seem like you're actually exercising your discipline mm -hmm. more to work. Well, probably they would move along the continuum. <laughs> 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 they would definitely start out external. <laughs> so when they migrate unicorn to work. Any more comments? Questions? I have a question. Yeah. <laughs> Rihanna, can you try to summarize how your four studies yeah. achieved your research aim in, say, one minute? In one minute? Okay. <laughs> um, well, the combination of the last study that measured leisure time and active travel, as well as the review that included multiple domains, did show that the life domain in which physical activity is accumulated moderates the relationship between physical activity and mental health. Um, and then the second study with the qualitative evidence looking at motivation as well as the last study, those two together showed that motivation moderated um, some of the domain specific relationships, particularly in terms of active travel. And so overall it showed that the relationship does vary between these different domains and that within some domains anyway, perhaps the more incidental domains such as active travel, that then motivation um, perhaps explains more of the variance. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thanks. Yeah. Lots of uh, the PhD students are contemplating or even pursuing uh, doing a meta-analysis or a systematic review. Can you, uh, now that you've actually done that, do you have some, uh, some tips or good guidance uh, for them as to uh, what they should do or even what they shouldn't do? Um, I guess my case um, might be a little bit different to some others. Um, when I originally planned out my studies at my CFC stage, um, I always intended on having a systematic review. However, it was never planned to be a meta-analysis because there simply wasn't that many studies that looked at this domain-specific role. Um, so I was never planning on doing the meta-analysis. When I did do the search terms um, and identified all the studies, out of those 97, I think it was around 50% of those studies were published um, in the last sort of three or four years, which is almost since I started my PhD and planned the review. Um, so I guess at the time, all of a sudden, I had to do a meta-analysis, which I wasn't planning on, which is sort of a bunch of extra work that I never really counted time for. So I guess at the start, I wasn't overly happy about doing the meta-analysis. Um, but, <laughs> but, 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 definitely recommend it because I think you learn so many different skills about just statistics in general by looking at these different so studies. She is, she is now intrinsically motivated. Yeah. Oh, she, no, she just wants everybody else to go through the same torture. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I never would have got to the point where I had that graph showing that work related to this is bad and leisure time was good. If I didn't have the better analysis, I could have hinted at it, but I would never have had my thesis finishing in this point where I can say that yes, the domain is different in um, sorry, the relationship is really different in different domains, so it definitely worked out. It takes forever, but it, in my case, I think it was definitely important to include it. It's kind of worth it at the end. So translation, you hate Chris and you hate the company. <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think that's it. Thank you very much. Sure.